Hey guys, welcome back to Popo's Woodwork. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. Of course, it's it's going to be CNC project again for the people that they're doing this. But anyway, so I had a request to build. If you if you follow my channel or subscribe to it, I built a hat rack. It, it's gosh, it's been a long time ago, but uh, I did it the hard way by having to do it all by hand. So I had somebody ask me, hey, I'd like to have two hat racks, and of course I got to do some coasters and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do, I sit down, I thought, you know, I got this CNC now, I'm gonna try to, instead of drilling this thing with my drill press and then getting the bandsaw, cutting all the slots, I'm just gonna design it on my CNC and let it cut it out. So I have done that, I've made the design, I'll, I'll flip you around and show you the design is simple, super simple, on the TV. And then uh, we're gonna get to cutting it and see how the thing turns out. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of talking at the beginning of the video, it's a hat rack, it's gonna hold, I think 16, 16 hats, give or take a few, and kind of a cheap project. So let me show you what I'm talking about, and hopefully it'll make sense, and hopefully when I get done with this, it'll all go together, but we're going to see. Anyhow, stick with me. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pull this up. I feel like I said, I've already got it designed, then it dawned on me. I said, hey, let me do a YouTube video on this, and maybe I can help somebody out. All right, so basically this thing's going to have two pieces, and if you can see my mouse right here, this is what it's going to look like cut out. And this is actually, after I worked through it, this is what it I end up doing. But what the bit wanted to do, it wanted to run all the way around the outside and then go in the holes. And you were looking at like a 25, 30 minute cut. So what I did is I went ahead and did, let's get this one out the way and zoom in. I went ahead and did it like this. So basically, let me go to my homepage. It's going to be 30 inches long, which is from this corner to this corner and three and a half inches wide. So basically what I bought was one by four by eight foot and cut them down to 30 inches. But of course a one by four is actually three and a half inches wide for the ones that don't know that. All right, so I used my calipers and measured it. It's 7.62 inches thick. And of course I leave all my stuff set like this. So soft wood, lower left, top, and all that shape, my Shapoco XXL. And I do my retract height at two inches. All right, so we got all that squared away. Now. All I did is once I set the, pretty much what the board's gonna look like, you see my background set for that, I drew a square and made that square. Let's do that for the ones that wanna see it. All right, so you come up here, you do a square, and I made a square. Let me zoom out. I came up here, I did 30 inches wide, 3.5 inches thick or height, boom. All right, so here's my board. And you see if I bring that over here, it's the exact same size, all right? Now, we did that. So then I came and I drew a circle. I can't remember what size circle I did, so we're gonna cheat. I'm gonna zoom in. That way I can kinda tell you. So I ain't even gonna worry about trying to hit it a couple times, I'm just gonna do it this way. All right, so bear with me, let me get this thing close cooperate all right almost there okay that's close so my circle give or take let's just say it's 1.25 inches all right so the width right right here it says 12467 so just we can just say 1.25 to make it easy all right so there's my circle we're gonna move that out the way. Click over here. Now we're gonna draw a rectangle. And I'm gonna have to do the same dang thing because I don't remember. That's about right though. All right, so let's just say that that's, I wanna say it's maybe 3 eighths of an inch wide. I believe is what I did. So we're gonna hit rotate and we're gonna spin it. Matter of fact, I hate it when it does that part. All right, so we'll do this to make sure I get my angle right. And I, I don't really know a specific angle. Maybe when I spin this thing, it'll tell me for the ones that want to know that. But I just kind of went with what looked like my, my original. Let me zoom in so I can see what the heck I'm doing. All right, my square is just a touch bigger, as you can see. Or it's not my square, my rectangle. All right, so we're, we're going to go with that. We're going to say that's cool. All right, so we're going to click this. Did it tell me my angle? It says X is, is 6.2991 and Y is 3.2869.
But like I said, I just kind of eyeballed it just to where I think it had enough pitch. It ain't got to be exact. It's a hat rack. All right, so we're going to highlight that one and highlight this one. And then we're going to zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. All right, now with both of those highlighted, I come over here to Boolean or Boolean, whatever they call that thing, and we're going to hit the first one, subtract. And you see it took out the centers. So there's, you got that right there. Then all I did was control C and I made a bunch of copies just like this right here. And then I just put them in here where they look centered. And right where well, you can see that I have my background on an inch now, I did that so I know where to put my clamps and not cut through my clamps. But normally I do it on, I'll show you. Normally I set this thing to a quarter of an inch cause it's easier to, easier to line things up. So I like my grid on a quarter inch. And so I just come in here and did these and lined them up. But basically what I did is I did all my circles and put them to where I counted, I did an inch, counted them all where they're even. And then I hit the, highlighted them all and did the center option and all that. Then I came back and added the rectangles on them. And I just pretty much left all of those. And once I made copies like this, I just used this and dragged it and lined it up with these and then just come on along and come on along and dragged it and lined all of them up and then I moved the original out of the way all right so that's that I know I'm kind of going I'm kind of going fast with this but I don't want this to be a real long video so let me delete this too this is what we're left with now you're probably thinking well I got this line running through here it's gonna cut that it, it doesn't matter it's the edge of the board so the reason I did this is see now I can highlight these individually. So you hit okay, then go over into toolpath. I've already created toolpath. See that cut my time. You see when I highlight it, there it is. I'm using a quarter inch end mill bit, the one that come with the shape oko, the, the quarter inch uh yeah, quarter inch end mill. 201, that's what I was trying to think of. So basically that cut me down to 12 minutes versus that long time. And I selected every one of these. I don't don't pick the outsider, it's gonna to try to pocket. So I selected all these, and I went into my tool path, and I left the settings exactly like they were. I didn't speed up the feeds and speeds, and it's going pretty good. And of course, I hit max depth, I, I hit the use stock bottom, and I'm doing the inside left, so it keeps my holes exactly the size that I wanted them. I don't wanna do offset, no offset, and then it cut and be half of the bit wider and I sure, was, sure didn't want to do the outside right. So we do the inside left. I named it hat rack cutout 1.4. Always put the bit size in there just in case. So we got, there's that. And we'll do show simulation. And this is what you left with. And you got, I didn't do any, I didn't do any tabs because I don't think that this is up. I'm going to be standing here anyway. So when it cuts it out, I'll just grab it with a pair of pliers or my finger, but I don't recommend using your finger near a router bleed, but I'll probably use pliers and grab it out. I just don't feel like fooling with them tabs. So there's my workpiece. And all right, let me get rid of the simulation and go back to design. Did I delete these? Okay. So basically I rotated this one to see what I was doing. Here's my other one. So basically these two are going to stand upright and then I'm going to have two more boards that's five inches wide and imagine the slots facing you instead of side profile view, they're facing you. One board is going to go and mount to the top like that. Let me zoom in where you can see. And then, gosh, I hate when it does that. It just goes to Alpha Centauri. All right. So then the bottom board, I'm going to put at the bottom, just like this right here. And then I'll take this one, let's see, let's just rotate it 90 degrees. All right, and like, we're well, just upside down, but it don't matter. So pretend that those slots are facing you as well. And then I'm just gonna screw them in with the inch and a quarter decking screws on the backside, then you have yourself a hat rack. So I know it kind of don't make, maybe not make sense now, and it looks like a bunch of jargon, but it's gonna make sense here in a little bit. So I'm gonna quit talking. I'm gonna uh, throw the wood on here and use, I got the probe, so I'm gonna use my probe and I'm gonna put it down here at the bottom left corner. So I have my X, Y, and Z and we're gonna cut it and see how it turns out. Okie dokie, let's go. All right, so I made my G code and I just named it, of course, Hat Rack Cutout. 
inch and a quarter bit. So we're gonna double click that. It loads it into here. Now I'm gonna go to my jog and I'm not gonna bore you with seeing this cause you've probably watched this a hundred times like myself. I'm gonna go ahead and get the wood locked down and then get the probe on it and we're gonna do the X, Y, and Z then we're gonna start cutting. Okie dokie. So we're gonna go ahead and do the X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna bump this thing up and line it up. Put this little Duma Flotty on there. Make sure it's on my corner. And probe XYZ, quarter inch end mill, begin probe. Does a little touchy touchy. These things are nice. Uh, when I ordered my machine, luckily, I know that these supposedly they're hard to come by or find in stock. Luckily, when I ordered my machine, my machine, I can't talk, they had them, so I jumped on it. I wished I would have ordered the bit setter as well. Not that big of a deal, but I tell you, if you had, they're both $120. So if you think about buying one of these things and you're in the mix, in the, in the middle of buying the touch probe or the bit setter, definitely go for the touch probe because the X, Y, and Z doing it this way is so much easier than having that. Cause I've done it the, the old fashioned way, just, just for craps and giggles. And I, and man, that that's, that's a must have right there. Must have. So anyhow, all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and speed this thing up because I know you don't want to sit here and watch it in real time. It'll take 12 minutes, but anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up and let's get this thing rocking. Okay, so I said I needed two, but I had enough lumber because I, but like I said, I bought two one by four by eight foots, which give me three of these cut down to 30 inches. And then I bought two one by six by eight foots, and I cut these down to 14 inches long. So that actually gives me three too. So I went ahead and got an extra one out of it. But as you can see, make sure it's on camera. I didn't route. I didn't round over the back, with, I, I used a quarter inch round over bit. So I rounded the circle and of course it wouldn't fit in here, but that's fine. And I did out here. I didn't do the back because that's gonna be against, that's gonna be against the wall. But as you can see, it kind of dresses it up a little bit and makes it a little bit more, it's smooth to the touch. But basically, let me take my own hat here, make sure it's on the camera. So you can take the bill of the hat and stick it in there and it's gonna hold it like that. or you can take and hang them like this if you choose to, but they're a little bit harder to get out. I designed, I made it to where you can stick the bill of the hat in there and it's gonna hold them like that. So you can, you can just stack them on top of each other and go all the way down. But anyway, so that's where we're at now. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, get the orientation right. Now what I'm gonna do, as you can see, one end is uh, a little bit thicker than the end, this end. So I'm gonna make the shorter side, let me make sure that's on camera. See, so yeah, I'm gonna make this shorter side here, that's gonna be at the top. And then this is gonna be at the bottom. And basically, get the old pencil out the way, move that. It'll be a simple, simple process. Make sure you got your pieces right. And all I'm gonna do is separate them, which I can't do it right here, I don't have enough room on my table. And I'm gonna put it one here and one at the bottom and I'm gonna pre-drill the holes and I'm gonna 
I, I guess I think I got some inch and a quarter decking screws and I'm gonna put two screws in each board and hold it together I, I, I don't have any more glue I'm out of glue come to find out go figure so I'm gonna use the decking screws normally I would glue it and shoot it with the brad gun and be done with it and you won't have to pre-drill be a little bit quicker but I don't have that so I'm gonna pre-drill and screw it in with a decking screw so bear with me let me get all that mess out and get my drill out and get ready for that well golly day hmm. that one's gonna be a little bit off that's what I get for guessing. All right, so there's one done. There's one done right there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of them. So here's all three of them done, and don't mind my little air nozzle thing hanging right there. But pretty simple project. I mean, really nothing to it, but I'll tell you what, cutting all, let me find my finger, cutting all these slots right here with the CNC, so much easier. I mean, my gosh, and plus, they're all the exact same. So let me get you a little closer. You can see the round over. And that's that's pretty much it. And once again, let's see, let's just pick this slot right here. So basically, that's what you got. You hang that thing on a wall, and what I'll do to hang it on a wall is either either you can drive a screw through here into a stud, which you don't really need a stud, it's just a bunch of hats. But what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna put on the back side, I can't find my finger. On the back side, I'm gonna put one of them little them little strips has got two nails. It's got the little jagged thing you see on the back of picture frames. And I'm gonna put that on the back in the center. That way they can hang it on one nail and be done with it. But uh, that's that. And all I gotta do now is take my brander and brand the back side of them and they're done. So anyhow, I hope y'all like this project. It was simple, easy, but it's nice when you can actually use a CNC and help you actually do some build something other than carving signs and all that but like i always say thank you all for watching if you got any questions shoot me a comment i'll try to answer them to the best of my ability if you have any questions with the design and the cad hit me up and I'll, I'll answer those for you uh, if you like the video hit the like button subscribe if you like my videos that i put out and i hope you do hit the notification bell that way every time i upload a new video it notifies you which i don't do them I don't do them like some people. I don't do like one or two a week or I, I do good to get one a month. But anyhow, thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a nice day and we'll see you on the next one.